As a digital nomad for the past three years and a solo female traveler, I've lived in the Netherlands, Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia. Throughout my travels, I've heard my fair share of travel myths, and I'm here to help you separate fact from fiction. Here are five travel myths busted. Myth number one, travel is expensive. Although it could seem like travel is expensive, it doesn't have to be. You can get into miles and points. So miles and points are travel rewards that you can earn with a credit card and you can use those points to pay for flights, to pay for hotels. So instead of using cash, you're using your travel rewards and you can redeem that for free nights at hotels, for business class flights, for economy flights, basically for whatever you need so that you could save your cash for doing fun things and going out to eat rather than actually paying for flights and paying for hotels. If you're thinking of ways to get even more value out of your points, stay up to date with the latest offers from your credit cards. For example, sometimes credit cards will offer transfer bonuses when you transfer points from the credit card to different airlines or hotels. It doesn't make sense to transfer your points prospectively because you never know if you're going to use them and points are a depreciating asset. However, if you have travel plans coming up and you see that there's a transfer bonus, it could be a great way to extend the value of your points. Myth number two, exchange money at the airport. Exchanging money at the airport is generally a bad idea, and it's because a lot of the places where you can exchange money charge a commission rate, so you're gonna be losing a lot in the conversion. The best thing to do is to get yourself a bank account in the US that waives foreign ATM fees or that refunds foreign ATM fees, and then when you need to take cash out, you use your debit card at an ATM and you withdraw money because when you do that, not only are you getting the interbank rate, but also you're gonna get a refund of any ATM fees that you're gonna pay. In addition, it's important that you always decline the currency conversion rate because if you accept the currency conversion rate, there is gonna be a spread built in that's gonna charge you basically what the um, conversion kiosks at the airport charge and you wanna avoid fees as much as possible. So first things first, get a bank account that waives or refunds foreign ATM fees, and two, always decline the currency conversion rate at the ATM. Myth number three, dressing up will help you get upgraded to business or first class. A lot of people think, oh, if I just dress up nicely and if I approach the agent at the gate and ask nicely to be upgraded to business or first class, that they're going to upgrade me. I can tell you right now, that's it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. Upgrades are usually reserved for people who are elites who have paid for tickets that allow upgrades or other flyers who are on the upgrade list. Myth number four, hostels are dirty, unsafe and only for young partiers. Honestly, read the reviews. You're gonna see in the reviews what kind of vibe the hostel has. Some hostels are specifically geared to more of a digital nomad co-working vibe. There may be a co-working place. There might be a lot of quiet spaces to get work done. So you're really able to find exactly what you're looking for. So I wouldn't get deterred by seeing the term hostel. A great site to look at is hostelworld.com. You could put in the location that you're looking for and then filter the search results by a specific rating. I usually target ratings of eight or above for a hostel. That's gonna help you weed out some properties that are rated unfavorably for whatever reason. You could have an amazing experience. You can book yourself a private room. And sometimes that's even cheaper than booking a private room at a hotel. And you're gonna be able to find yourself a great deal while also being part of a nice hostel community. Myth number five, solo travel is dangerous for women. Travel can be dangerous, especially if you're on your own. There's things that you could do to mitigate the risk as much as possible. For example, if you're traveling solo, where you stay matters. So if you're booking an Airbnb or you're booking a hotel or you're booking a hostel, you want it to be a place that you feel comfortable walking home to at night or if you're gonna be walking around the area, you wanna feel safe, it should be a place that's well lit. It should be a place where you feel comfortable coming home whenever you need to because you just don't want to create a situation that's gonna make it more risky for yourself. Another thing to keep in mind is don't get too drunk. Sure, go out and have fun, but remember to be conscious of your behavior. A lot of crimes are crimes of opportunity and you never wanna give somebody a reason to think of you as an easy target. You wanna be able to watch 
out for yourself. Also, don't stand on the corner looking at your phone, not really knowing where you're going. You want to look confident and you want to give off the impression that you know what you're doing. So even if that means stepping into a cafe to check your phone for directions on where you go, then that's something that you can do because then at least you're going to feel confident when you walk outside. And again, you're going to eliminate the opportunity that somebody can try to take advantage of you. Another thing to be mindful of is taxis. So a lot of places don't have Uber, but if you can get some kind of a local ride sharing app, whether it's Uber or Bolt or whatever other app, the place that you're going to uses, that's going to be a lot more safer than just getting into a taxi. Because when you get into a taxi and you pay in cash, you don't know if that's potentially a legit person, but with a ride sharing app, there's just a, another layer of safety. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Uh, another thing to keep in mind when you're traveling to a foreign country, you want to get a local SIM card. So basically what you would do is you go to a, a tech store or you go to um, a convenience store or whatever store sells SIM cards and you want to buy a local SIM card for whatever country you're in and put that into your phone so that you get on the local plan as opposed to using your own phone for international roaming. A lot of people, when they travel, they don't even know about this option and they end up using their own phone and then it's expensive or it's 2G network, which is just not as fast, or they just end up only traveling and using Wi-Fi. And honestly, the best thing you could do is just make yourself reachable. And the easiest and cheapest way to do that is it by buying a local SIM card. Another thing that you can do to feel safer is to seek out a community. There's different Facebook groups available for solo female travelers, solo travelers, female digital nomads and other local groups where you can connect with other people who are foreigners in the country that you're going to. You're going to be able to meet other people first on Facebook if you want to, and then in real life, if they're traveling in the same destination as you are, it's a great way to connect with other people and to build confidence rather than just like meeting random people that you may not know anything about. Finding a community, especially using Facebook groups is a great way to connect with other people. And another thing that you could do is you can use different apps to make yourself more easily accessible to your family. So for example, there's a website and an app called TripIt where you would forward all of your travel plans. So let's say your hotel, your plane ticket, your ferry, whatever travel plans you have. Not only can you see everything easily in one place, but you also have the option of sharing your itinerary with your friends or family. It's just a great way to let others know where you're staying, what flight you're on. If let's say somebody's picking up from the airport, they know if your flight's going to be late because they have all that information there. So it's a great way to stay connected to others and especially your family. If they're worried about you traveling by yourself, you could share your trip details with them and they'll know exactly where you are at all times. As a recap, some common travel myths are travel is expensive, exchange money at the airport, dressing up will help you get upgraded, hostels are only for partiers, and solo travel is dangerous for women. While some of these misconceptions are rooted in truth, they are just myths. And by following these tips, you can have an amazing, affordable, and safe trip. Hi, I'm Alina Geller, and I'm a travel reward expert at NerdWallet. If you have some travel myths that you want debunked, post them in the comments below and hit subscribe.